Late in the summer of 1977, an historic mission of exploration was launched. Twin spacecraft, christened Voyager 1 and 2, broke free from the Earth's gravity on journeys to the outer reaches of the solar system. Their primary destinations were the four giant outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. For 13 years, the Voyagers probed these mysterious worlds at close range, while collecting data and transmitting stunning images back to Earth. Among thousands of pictures of planets and moons, perhaps the most memorable was recorded on February the 14th, 1990, when Voyager 1 approached the edge of the solar system, then turned back toward the sun. With its wide and narrow angle cameras, the spacecraft captured unprecedented views of our home star and six of its orbiting planets. One of them appeared as a small pale dot engulfed by a ray of sunlight. It was the Earth from nearly four billion miles away. While the world gazed intently at this pinpoint of light, timeless questions about its meaning, purpose and significance suddenly took on new relevance. And once again, as in ages past, we paused to consider our planet's role within the grand scheme of the universe. The mystery of the Earth's significance in the universe has challenged philosophy and science for more than 2,000 years. Early perceptions were shaped by the work of the Greek scholars Aristotle and Ptolemy. They taught that the Earth sat motionless in the center of the heavens while the moon, sun and other stars and planets revolved around it. This geocentric view was the foundation of Western cosmology for 18 centuries. Then, in 1543, the Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus ignited a revolution. In his book on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres, Copernicus argued that the Earth was not stationary, but instead orbited with the other planets around the Sun. For the first time, a correct understanding of the mechanics and structure of the solar system was in sight. The idea of the moving Earth seemed to violate some fundamental principle, but Copernicus somehow had the mental power to imagine what even to him seemed absurd. So he thought the impossible. The Earth moves. And once you imagine the Earth moving instead of the Sun, uh, the mathematics of that cosmic machine started to make sense. It was the key that unlocked one of the great mysteries of the universe. Copernicus had laid the cornerstone for modern astronomy. Yet, 400 years after his discovery, the empirical fact that our planet was not the center of the solar system had evolved into what is now known as the Copernican Principle. The idea that the Earth occupies no preferred place in the universe. Copernicus had a theoretical way of explaining the apparent motion of the planets across the sky. That's all it was. It wasn't a theory that told us whether or not Earth was special, or whether we played some importance in the scheme of things, or whether every place in the universe was the same as every other place. Nevertheless, this reinterpretation of Copernicus became prominent in the 20th century. It's often called the principle of mediocrity. 
This principle says that our location and our status are mediocre, they're unexceptional. As a result, we should not assume that we are in any way privileged or that the universe was designed with us or beings like us in mind. The Copernican principle and the concept of the Earth's insignificance was popularized during the 1970s and 80s by the late astronomer Carl Sagan. In his best-selling book, Pale Blue Dot, Sagan wrote, Because of the reflection of sunlight, the Earth seems to be sitting in a beam of light, as if there were some special significance to this small world. But it's just an accident of geometry and optics. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. One reason for the widespread acceptance of the Copernican principle can be traced to a discovery made on this mountaintop overlooking Los Angeles. Between 1921 and 1926, the astronomer Edwin Hubble used this telescope to make some of the most important discoveries in the history of science. Through the window of the Mount Wilson Observatory, Hubble unveiled the true magnitude of the universe. At the time that Hubble was doing his work, many astronomers believed that the galaxy, our galaxy, uh, marked the edge of the universe, and there was nothing beyond it. Edwin Hubble altered this perception of the universe when he used the most powerful telescope of his day to photograph indistinct objects in space. Long thought to be nearby clouds of gas and dust, Hubble determined that these patches of light were actually individual galaxies, many as large or larger than our own Milky Way. The implication in what he found was that the universe consists of, um, indeed, billions of galaxies, each with many billions of stars and planets, and it was a universe with a wealth of numbers and variety uh, that transcended the imagination of both layman and astronomer. He, in effect, enlarged the boundaries of the universe. Edwin Hubble revealed that the Milky Way galaxy, encompassing more than 100 billion stars, including our sun, was a mere pinpoint of light in the universe. When Hubble found that there were many galaxies, uh, we saw that our galaxy was nothing distinguished at all, just one ordinary galaxy among, among billions. And that's the ultimate extension of the Copernican principle. More than 80 years have passed since Edwin Hubble's discovery, Yet today, its profound implications still evoke a fundamental question. Does contemporary scientific knowledge actually confirm the Copernican principle's primary claim? That the Earth and the life it sustains exist without purpose or significance in the universe? of the Copernican principle is the belief that habitable planets and complex life are abundant throughout our galaxy and the rest of the cosmos. Perhaps no scientific endeavor has been influenced more deeply by this idea than the research program called SETI. Well, SETI, which is, of course, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, is trying to do exactly that. We're searching for extraterrestrial intelligence. In other words, we're looking for aliens that are at least as clever as we are. Now, we try and do that not by trying to go there the way they do in the movies all the time or waiting for them to come here. We try and find the aliens, if you will, at home on the basis of eavesdropping on signals they might be sending our way. So we use large telescopes pointed at other star systems to try and find these telltale signs that there's some cosmic company out there. 
Since 1960, SETI researchers have utilized radio telescopes throughout the world to monitor transmissions from distant regions of the Milky Way. While no definitive signs of intelligent life have ever been detected, these investigations have triggered much speculation about the possibility of extraterrestrial civilizations. Estimates vary all over the place. Carl Sagan thought there might be millions of civilizations that are kind of contemporaries of ours. I can imagine that within the Milky Way galaxy, the number of contemporary intelligent civilizations, I think is probably in the thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands. But the bottom line, actually, when people ask, well, why do you think that they're out there, is that the universe is extraordinarily rich, extraordinarily vast. The number of stars that we can see, it's on the order of 10,000 billion billion star systems. So unless there's something very, very special, miraculous, if you will, about our solar system, about our planet Earth, unless there's something extraordinarily unusual about it, then what happened here must have happened many times uh, in, in the history of, of the universe. The assumption that habitable planets and extraterrestrial life are abundant has inspired not only the SETI program, but also the new science of astrobiology and the search for biological evidence of living organisms, past and present. Since 1995, this search has extended beyond our solar system as astrobiologists have identified more than 100 planets orbiting nearby stars. Each of them is a gas giant, much like Jupiter. While few scientists believe that these alien worlds can sustain even simple life, their discoveries represent important steps toward answering a question that will shape astronomy in the 21st century. Are habitable planets rare or common in the universe? I'm an astrobiologist, and the area that I've done the most work in lately is the field of extrasolar planets. What motivates me is just to examine the conditions necessary for life and look elsewhere in the universe and see if those conditions are met anywhere else. And the answer could be yes, and the answer could be no, and either answer is interesting. Guillermo Gonzalez works as a research scientist in NASA's astrobiology program. His interest in this field is tied to his early fascination with the prospect of life beyond the Earth. I grew up in the 1960s, and like most other people of my generation, I was really amazed by the Apollo lunar landings, and uh, that really inspired me and, uh, and had something to do with my getting interested in astronomy. In my early years, I came to believe very strongly that there must be other civilizations out there and that the galaxy was teeming with life. And so I was a strong supporter of uh, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. My belief wasn't based on any real hardcore scientific arguments. It was just the impression that I had that the galaxy was such a big place. And I didn't give the other side of the equation much thought. In other words, there's two sides of the equation. There's the number of stars, the number of trials, if you will. But the other side is the factors. It takes a lot of factors to have a habitable planet and a planetary system. For Gonzalez and other astrobiologists, these factors required for the Earth's habitability became the focus of extensive research. We've demonstrated in dozens of different ways the laws of physics and chemistry that pertain in a laboratory anywhere on Earth apply anywhere in the solar system, apply anywhere in the galaxy, and in many cases out to the most distant galaxies that we can see. There are indeed unchanging physical laws in the universe that apply to the entirety of the universe, that they're not localized to one place. This consistency in the laws of physics and chemistry has led many researchers to conclude that the factors necessary for complex life on Earth are also the best parameters in the search for habitable planets elsewhere in the universe. 